Hi, I'm Robin Wally. Welcome to Lenscraft. Today sees the launch of a new photography product from DxO. It's called DxO Pure Raw, and it aims to improve the quality of your images without changing your existing workflow. Pure Raw is a raw converter with a difference. Its purpose is to pre-process your raw files using a few of the best DxO technologies to optimize image quality. It then creates a DNG format file, which you can process as you would any other raw file. When you use Pure Raw to process the original raw file, it handles the critical demosaicing of the raw data. It also applies the excellent DxO lens corrections and deep prime noise reduction. By removing the imperfections of the raw capture and processing step, it restores the image to a perfect state. You're then free to edit the resulting DNG file with your existing raw converter. The assumption here is that DxO Pure Raw is an improvement on the capabilities of your existing converter. But before we look at that point, I want to show you how simple the software is to use. The Pure Raw software is available for both Windows and Mac computers. For this video, I'm using it on my Mac with the latest version of the Big Sur operating system. The software runs as a standalone product rather than as a plugin to other software. Once the software launches, you see an empty window where you can either click the icon to open files, or you can drag and drop files onto the window to open them. I already have some test RAW files that I've selected as being quite challenging to test the capabilities of Pure RAW. When you open a RAW file for processing, you see a window showing you the associated DxO modules. You can use this to select the module you want to use from the list, although for this image, there's only one option. This is for the Panasonic GX1 using a Panasonic 14-45 lens, and it's already been downloaded by the software. After saving the selection, we see the RAW file thumbnail. If I want to process a second RAW file, I can drag and drop that onto the window to open it. I then have two thumbnails in the list. To process one of these two files, I can select it in the list and then click the Process Photo button at the top of the interface. This opens a dialog where I can select the settings to use for processing. First I have the raw processing, where I can pick one of the three options being high quality, prime or deep prime. If you use DxO Photo Lab, you'll probably be familiar with these as they're the noise reduction options. When I change the method I want to use, the estimated processing time updates. For this example, I'll use deep prime as it's quite a noisy image as well as being quite soft. The Panasonic GX1 wasn't the cleanest Micro Four Thirds camera, and this image was shot in low light at ISO 800. Next, I can choose the output format for the processed image, and I have the options of JPEG or DNG. I'm going to select the DNG option because I want to process it further in Lightroom and compare it against the original RAW file. Finally, I can set the destination folder where the new DNG files saved. I'm going to use the DxO folder option, which creates a DxO folder in the same location as the original RAW file. After selecting the options, I can click the process button to start the processing. The options I selected are also saved and used next time I process a file, but I do have the opportunity to change them. When the processing is complete, I see a dialog with three options. I can open a finder window to see the new file that's been saved. I can view the results or I can export to another application. For the moment, I'm going to check the results using the built-in image viewer in DxO Pure Raw. In the split screen mode, if I move the split left and right, you can see the correction applied by Pure Raw. You can probably see this more easily though if I switch to the full screen preview mode. Now let's look at 100% magnification to check the detail in the image. I don't know how well you can see this on the video, but the sky in the original is quite noisy, but noise free in the process DNG file. Also, the foreground detail in the original RAW is blurred and mushy, where it's pin sharp in the new DNG file. Let's close the preview and go back to the RAW file list. At the top of the screen, I have two buttons which I can use to filter the list to show either processed or unprocessed images. I'll now add a couple more image files to the list. Again, I see the dialog showing the available modules. This time, one of the files doesn't have a module downloaded, so I can click the download button to download that. 
Incidentally, if you ever want to change the modules selected, you can open the dialog again using the DXL modules button at the top of the screen. You can then change and save your module settings. Now let me show you just how good the DXL modules are with a couple more images. I'll select and process these two RAW files using the same settings as last time. If I zoom to 100% magnification, you can see the image becomes noise free and the detail is superb. This file was shot on an old Micro Four Thirds camera at ISO 1600 in demanding lighting, but it looks like a studio shot. If I come down to the bowl on the table, you can see the colour fringing around the rim, but it's gone in the process DNG file. Now let's look at the other image. If I display the corrected image and then switch between that and the original RAW file, you can see how good the optical correction is. Next I want to make a comparison in Lightroom. I can do this by picking the process DNG files and exporting them to Lightroom from DXL Pure RAW. If you're a Lightroom user, this is possibly how you might pre-process your RAW files. After selecting the RAW files, I can click the Export button. This displays a dialog where I can select to export to Lightroom, Photoshop or any other application that can process RAW files. How well that works though depends really on the other software. For example, when I tried Capture One, the software launches but it didn't import the files and I had to import them manually. I'm selecting Lightroom for this example because that's what I use to manage my image library. When Lightroom opens it displays the selected DNG files to import and add to the catalogue. Now that I have the original RAW files and the processed DNG files in Lightroom, let's compare the quality of the two. Looking first at the picture of the desk in the develop module, I can still see some barrel distortion in the RAW file. Notice also that Lightroom is cropping the edges of the frame where DxO isn't. Zooming in to 100%, Lightroom looks to have made a reasonable job of processing the detail and of removing the noise. But watch what happens if I zoom to 200% in the bottom right of the frame. We see quite a lot of noise and whilst I can increase the noise reduction, it also removes the fine detail. Now compare this to the DNG file processed in DXL Pure RAW and it's noise free and sharp. It's the same thing with all of the images that I processed in DXL Pure RAW. Whilst I could improve the Lightroom processing with some careful adjustment, I don't need to with the processed DNG files. So let's talk now a little bit about who might want to use Pure RAW. My easy answer to this is I think it's someone like me. I value having the best image quality and I already use DxO Photo Lab to process my Micro Four Thirds RAW files. Interestingly, there's a lot of similarity between the settings I use in Photolab and what happens in DxO Pure RAW. If you're interested in that, I'll include a link in the YouTube video information to my previous video. Now, whilst I process my Micro Four Thirds files in Photolab, I still use Lightroom a lot and I use it to manage my photo library and do all of my keywording and organising. It's brilliant for that and I have thousands of hours invested in my catalogue that I don't want to throw away. What Pure RAW gives me is a way to optimise selected RAW files with the options to then process them in Lightroom or another editor. The Lightroom editing tools are great, but in my opinion are let down by the image quality for some cameras. What Pure RAW gives you is the great image quality of DxO whilst retaining your existing workflow and tools. Now before I get too carried away, I want to stress that I don't think Pure RAW is perfect and there are a few limitations that I've found. Watch what happens if I add this RAW file shot with my Sony A7R camera. Pure RAW wants to correct it with a Tamron lens module. Except I don't have a Tamron lens. I shot this with a Canon 2470 L series lens on a Metabones lens adapter. 
This is the same problem I found when I tried to process my Sony A7R files in Photolab. Where I use a lens adapter, the lens isn't correctly recognised. And if I continue and process the image, it's not any better than the original RAW file, and in fact it gets some distortion around the edges. The next point I want to mention, again, won't affect everyone. But if you're a Fuji XT user as I am, just like Photolab, Pure Raw doesn't support the Fuji XT RAW files. An alternative though to Pure Raw for Fuji XT users is X Transformer, which I use myself. This does the same thing as Pure Raw, but only for Fuji RAW files, and it's by a company called Iridient. I'll also include a link to that in the YouTube video information. The final problem you might find when you're using Pure Raw is that the image correction is just too sharp. So far, I haven't experienced this myself, but I know some people who find DxO Photo Lab too sharp. If that's you, you may also find the results from Pure Raw too sharp. What would be great to see in Pure Raw is a preferences dialog where you could toggle options on and off, but perhaps that will come in a future release. Overall, this is a great piece of software and I'm finding the results excellent. It fits neatly into my existing workflow and it allows me to use Lightroom and Photoshop tools with the great image quality of DxO. The software is available from Wednesday the 14th of April for an introductory price of $79.99 until the end of May.